10. Genesis 3, verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord, and Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, above every uh, upon thy belly that shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and the desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat, uh, eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothe them. All right, let's just pray. Gently, Father, Lord, thank you for this evening. Pray that you would help me calm my nerves, say, uh, try to bring forth your word. Thank you for it, that we have it, we can read it and study it. And Lord, we just want to thank you for uh, your grace, uh, and the help that you give. And Lord, as we look at uh, uh, the origin of suffering, pray that uh, you would help us to uh, just recognize where we come from. We recognize that we are all sinful, um, but Lord, we can trust in your grace and we have uh, your provision. Um, pray you would help us to serve you better through this. Pray this in your name. Amen. Yeah. Um, I'm only 25. I'm still young, but I figured out that life is very difficult. Um, I think we all figured that out pretty young. Uh, we'll face problems daily, uh, and it doesn't matter what your financial, uh, social, or even your spiritual standing is. You're all going. We are all going to face uh, trouble, uh, sorrow, heartache. You can't escape from it. Um, and we just read there the origin of all suffering. Um, prior to this, uh, Garden of Eden was paradise. There was no suffering. Um, and we're just going to look at a few things of the, the, uh, the origin of suffering um, and, and how it affects us. Um, and also, the, uh, we're just going to take a few moments to look at the uh, few elements of uh, who received their uh, punishment first, uh, just to start off. Uh, in verse 14 of Genesis, uh, we see that the serpent was the first to receive his punishment, what would become the, the norm of suffering. Uh, verse 14, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon, ev uh, upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Um, it's my understanding that the snake's physical curses uh, are a representation of the, the curses that uh, Satan receives. Um, it's more of a, a physical representation of it. Um, the serpent is cursed above all cattle and beasts. Uh, he will go on his belly, um, believe that he probably had legs, uh, probably the best bet, some think that he may have had wings, um, but uh, more than likely had legs like a snake. Um, some even think that he may have walked on his hind legs, and I'm glad that uh, he doesn't have legs because that would be a terrifying thing now to uh, see a snake walking towards you on his hind legs. Um, it also says he'll eat the dust, uh, sorry, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Um, something interesting, snakes actually smell by uh, tasting dust in the air. They've got a special organ in their mouth. That's what the, the tongue flickering is. Uh, they're literally tasting dust. Um, and that wasn't discovered until many, many, many years later. And just uh, another point of evidence pointing towards God's uh, uh, divine nature. He knows everything that he put that in there uh, many, many, many years before anyone even figured that out. Um, these curses brought the serpent low to the ground. Um, and spiritually, that represents uh, Satan's position being lowered um, even further. I believe that represents uh, 
his um, uh, position he'll have when he's cast into the lake of fire. Uh, if we want to turn to Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. I'm in the wrong chapter. There we go. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Uh, there's no lower position than being in the lake of fire. Uh, many people joke uh, about uh, reigning in hell. Uh, they take a quote from John Milton's poem, Paradise Lost, better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven. Uh, they often joke about serving in, in hell with, uh, oh, sorry, ruling in hell with Satan. Um, Satan has no power in hell, in, in the lake of fire. He has no position. Um, and it's a, it's a terrifying uh, thought that so many people around the, uh, around the world will join Satan. Um, and uh, they mock at the curse that uh, Satan has received. Um, and in verse 15 of Genesis 3, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, uh, this year starts to, uh, pretty much it's a, uh, a prophecy of all human history. Uh, this is the, the war between hum humankind and Satan. Um, it also shows that there, there is, uh, sorry, in human history, that also shows that uh, uh, humans have not really gotten along with snakes. Um, we come from the country, so uh, whenever we see a snake, you try to stay away from it. Um, and they're mostly venomous, and you don't really want to be bitten by it. Um, and spiritually, uh, that's, the, that's the war we have with mankind. Uh, sorry, sorry, mankind has with Satan. Um, that's shown in Ephesians 6, 11 to 12. Ephesians 6, 11 to 12. We'll be turning around a lot, so if you can't keep up, that's fine. I'll just read it out, but if you'd like to turn there, you can. Ephesians 6, 11 to 12. Uh, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Uh, and also in uh, 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, there will always be a war with Satan while we live. Um, and you can even see this in Job chapters 1 and 2. Um, Satan will always try to uh, destroy uh, humans. Um, also in the second half of that verse in Genesis 3, we see, uh, it shall bruise thy head, sorry, uh, between... Sorry, I'll, let me just start from the start. And I will put envy between thee and the woman, uh, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh, this is the first uh, prophecy of a saviour. Um, Satan will bruise the heel, of, that's being Jesus. He'll kill his physical body here on earth, but it is just bruising the heel. Satan will uh, bruise, uh, sorry, Jesus will bruise Satan's head. Um, that shows that Jesus will triumph, and he has triumphed. Uh, and uh, Satan will be sent to the, uh, the lake of fire. Uh, it is an interesting side note there that uh, Satan was actually the first to be told uh, about the coming of Christ. Uh, Satan knew from the beginning uh, that he was going to lose. Um, it's also it's just an interesting thing to, to know that Satan is so stuck on his course and refused to repent of it. Um, 
knowing from the start that you're going to lose and still uh, fighting for it, something that I don't really understand. Um, but uh, it doesn't stop him from uh, trying to, to stop us. And he'll, he'll kill us if we can, if he can. Um, next, we're going to look at the woman's suffering. And that we see that in verse 16. Uh, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Um, the woman's punishment, the sorrow that she would have in life, is that children, uh, having children is going to hurt. It's obviously something I'm never going to know, but uh, uh, pregnancy was used as an illustration in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. We can turn there. First Thessalonians 5, 3 Thessalonians uh, 5.3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Uh, and also in Isaiah 13.8 And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed at one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Um, so if your uh, pain becomes a sin, and there's many, many other times that uh, uh, pain, suffering has been compared to uh, childbirth and, uh, and pregnancy. If your pain becomes a standard for something in the Bible to show that it's painful, uh, I have no doubt that it's incredibly painful. <laughs> Um, so, and also, uh, later on in that verse, uh, the, we see the new pattern of the family unit. Uh, uh, in sorrow that shalt bring forth children, thy desire shall be to thy husband, he shall rule over thee. Um, so it would appear that before this, uh, the family unit was different in the uh, Garden of Eden. Uh, we also see the family unit in detail in Ephesians 5, 22 to 2018, if you'd like to turn to Ephesians 5, 22. All right, Ephesians 5, 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the, let the wives be to their own husbands uh, in everything. Now, you can't stop reading. Uh, I know, I've known of many people who have stopped there, and it hurts their families. Verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water uh, by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, that he, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. Um, if you don't follow that uh, passage all the way through, uh, families die. Every part of that passage needs to be followed to have a family uh, that, that runs well, a wife that submits to a husband and a husband that loves his wife. Um, next, in verse 17 in, in Genesis 3, we see uh, man's curse, man's suffering. Genesis 3, 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Uh, in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, unto dust shalt thou return. Um, 
So yeah, Adam was the third to receive his punishment, his suffering. Um, his son, his sin was different, uh, as he was not deceived by Satan, but uh, went along with Eve. Um, his curse was that work was now going to be hard. Uh, interesting enough, work had already been instituted into life. You can read that in Genesis two fifteen, just a few pages back. Uh, Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man, put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. Uh, I'm not sure what work would have been like in the Garden of Eden. Uh, I'm assuming it would have been uh, more enjoyable than anything else. Uh, it was tending the garden. Uh, I recently bought a house and the, uh, all the weeds are everywhere, so I had to do some work to try to bring it back to what it should be. Uh, luckily, the, the soil that the, ground is, uh, the house is on is all sandy so you can just kind of pull the weeds out really easily and I, I imagine uh, it would be it would have been something like that uh, i have actually find it quite fun to garden um, i'll find it fun now until it becomes a chore and then and then i'll understand what it's like afterwards um, and then we see uh, 17 19 there was uh, thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to thee thou shalt eat of the herb of the field um, thorns and thistles just make uh, work difficult um, and in the modern uh, times not many of us are farmers we're not uh, eating the, the food we grow ourselves but it doesn't mean that uh, work is easy now um, quite often you'll be working away and you'll come across a problem and you're just thinking to yourself well, why is there a problem there shouldn't be a problem why can't things just go easy uh, that's the curse it doesn't matter what line of work we have there will be problems because it's the curse um, these are just extra curses that uh, uh, came upon Adam. The main curse, or, or the, uh, the brunt of the curse, is actually death. Uh, Romans, uh, well, let's read Genesis 2.17, actually. Genesis 2.17. This was the commandment that uh, God gave to Adam uh, at the very beginning. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, uh, thereof thou shalt surely die. Uh, interesting, uh, there's a lot of debate over that verse on, uh, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Uh, some believe that that means that uh, uh, Adam's immortality was cut off from that day. Um, it, some say that it was uh, his separation from God the same way as before. Um, some believe that it was actually uh, the, uh, the covering of the clothes as a substitute for the sin was uh, uh, why he didn't die in the very day. Um, whatever it may be, he didn't die in the, that day. Um, but Adam knew the price of that sin before he sinned. Um, it also shows in uh, Romans 5.12 that the result of sin is death. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all uh, for that all have sinned. Sin is the cause of death, um, and that, uh, that uh, price needs to be paid. Um, now, verse, uh, Genesis, Genesis 3, verse 20, is an interesting little verse. I found it quite amusing. Uh, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. I'm not exactly sure what he was calling his wife prior to that. Uh, every other time, she is just referred to as the woman. So if she had another name... It's, it's not mentioned there. Um, I thought that was quite uh, uh, amusing. Um, but in verse 21, uh, we see the last, uh, uh, the last thing to receive sorrow during that time. Um, in verse 21, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Uh, the last to receive sorrow or, or punishment were the animals that were killed to make coats uh, of skin for Adam and Eve. Um, this sorrow wasn't a punishment. 
these animals that uh, had been killed, whatever it was, uh, they hadn't sinned. Uh, the sacrifice was innocent and was killed to make a covering for Adam and Eve's sin. Um, Adam and Eve had tried to make fig, uh, let's see, in Genesis uh, 3, 7, I believe. And the eyes of them both were opened. They knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They tried to cover their sin by themselves. Um, covering our own sins will never work. God had to step in and... Uh, he made a covering for them. Uh, this is actually the second type of Christ we see in Genesis 3. Uh, we're going to fo shift our focus a little bit to the suffering of Jesus Christ uh, as the uh, sacrificial lamb for us. Um, often we suffer for our sins and decisions. Uh, there's a saying, or it's like a, a meme, where it's plastered on a, uh, I think it's out the front of a church actually, uh, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes the reason is you're stupid and make bad decisions. That, that's true. I've made many bad decisions and I've suffered for them. Um, th there are many that have made bad decisions and suffered for it as well in the Bible. Um, we have a little bit of time, so we'll actually look at these. Uh, first, we see Abram in Genesis 12, 10 to 13. Genesis 12, 10 to 13. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down unto Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon, therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see me, uh, see thee, that thou, they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee." Uh, if you read the rest of the story, that caused some problems. Uh, luckily, nothing happened, but it could have caused problems. That was a bad decision. And then in Genesis 13, 10 to 11. Um, hmm, is that the right one? I think I've actually put down the wrong... Uh, sorry, Genesis 13, 10 to 11. Uh, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Uh, uh, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, uh, the one from another. Uh, Lot chose uh, the, the fair plains. He chose prosperity, uh, and that cost him his family, all of his family except his two daughters. Um, that was a terrible decision. Um, also, in Exodus 32, 1 to 4, we have Aaron. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, <laughs> Make us gods that shall go before us. For as, uh, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are the ears of your, uh, that are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the gold, golden earring, uh, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, fashioned it with graving tool, uh, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Um, amazing how quickly they, they turned away from God to, uh, to serve uh, false gods. Uh, the uh, result of this is in 26 to 28. Uh, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Uh, and he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi uh, did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. 
bad decisions caused 3,000 men to die that day. Um, and in Numbers 16, 1 to 3, we see the rebellion of Korah. Now the Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of El Eliab, and on, and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Uh, they chose to rebel. Uh, the result of that is found in 28 uh, to 35. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they visit it after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all the, uh, that appertain to them, uh, and they go down uh, quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. Uh, they and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Uh, our decisions have consequences. Um, doesn't matter if it's uh, here or uh, on earth, you'll suffer the consequences of our actions. Uh, we'll also be judged for our uh, actions uh, in heaven. Now, not every suffer, time we suffer uh, is because of a sin. It will still be our decision more, more often than not, um, but it's not necessarily a sin. We will suffer from serving Jesus. Um, turn to 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Uh, I don't believe in a prosperity gospel. I believe that the, the more you try to serve God, the more you're going to be attacked. You'll be uh, blessed for it, and you'll be rewarded for it. Um, but Satan is going to attack you more and more. 2 Corinthians 6, 4 to 5. Uh, but in all things, approve yourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, uh, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the, ho by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, uh, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left. Um, uh, also, 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 27. This is uh, Paul giving an account of his service. 23. Uh, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off of the, of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils of the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So when people say that uh, uh, when you get saved and you follow God and your life will be easy, that's the verse I always look at. Uh, I actually knew a guy who, who believed this. Um, uh, it's a strange way to look at it. So if you read your Bible, you'll see that the more you serve God, uh, the more uh, trouble you're going to find yourself in. But it is the, the best kind of trouble to be in. Uh, the thing with 
suffering from your bad decisions when you sin or uh, just make a bad decision. Uh, you suffer for it. You may learn something. There's been many times I've made terrible decisions, dug myself into a hole. Uh, God's got me out of the hole and I learned something through it. It's also another reason why you shouldn't necessarily run in and uh, save someone. You might be stealing an opportunity uh, from God to work in someone. Um, that's beside the point. Um, when we suffer for Christ, we're building our foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, according to 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 12 to 13. Uh, we can actually... Uh, actually, we won't read that. We'll just keep going. Um, but now we look at Jesus. Jesus suffered not because of what he did, but because of what we did. If you would like to turn to 1 Peter 3.18. First Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Uh, also in Hebrews uh, 9.28 Hebrews 9.28 So Christ once it was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And also in Isaiah uh, chapter 53. Isaiah 53 is one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. Uh, we'll read the whole chapter actually. Uh, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form, nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, and he and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand." He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus suffered all of these things. It's such an amazing uh, chapter of the of the Bible to go through. He suffered so many things for us. Um, he didn't need to. He, he did it for us. And on top of all that suffering uh, uh, and the suffering of the cross, there was other uh, difficulties that uh, Jesus endured during his ministry. Um, let's just look at a few of these quickly. Um, firstly, his people rejected him. Uh, in Luke 4, we see that he was rejected rejected uh, in his hometown. Uh, context starts in verse 16, but we'll just jump to 428 to 29. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Uh, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Uh, 
his own, his own people in his own hometown, people that he grew up with and knew, rejected him. He was then rejected by his own family in John 7, 1 to 5. John 7, 1 to 5. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Uh, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Uh, we know that uh, later on that, uh, some of his family did believe in him. Um, and also notice in verse 1 uh, that uh, the Jews sought to kill him. Uh, in Matthew 26, 3 to 4, we see the Jewish leaders. Twenty six three to four. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the place of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, uh, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. So they wanted to kill him, but they were afraid of uh, the people at that time. And then Matthew 27, 17 to 23. Matthew 27. Then the uh, soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, uh, and they striped him, uh, stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited, plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head uh, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Uh, and they, I'm reading from the, no, uh, yes, I'm reading from the wrong verse. That would explain why nothing was making sense. Uh, from 12, uh, 17, sorry. 17, there we go. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, uh, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or uh, Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with that, that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whether the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. Um, it's funny that it's also a, uh, it just points towards the danger of influence as well. Um, these were the same Jewish leaders who were worried about an uproar only uh, in the previous chapter. Um, but in that situation, they were able to persuade uh, the crowd, the multitude, uh, to betray and reject Jesus. Um, it's also a, a warning, I guess, to, to not follow popular leaders, to actually follow the Bible. Um, Jesus also suffered from weariness in John 4, 6. Uh, it says, John chapter 4, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat uh, thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Um, Jesus traveled for uh, three years of his ministry, pretty much the entire time. Um, and even during this time when he was uh, weary, that's the time when he spoke with that Samaritan uh, woman. Uh, even when he was weary, he was doing God's work. Very quickly. Um, also in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, it appears that he didn't sleep for, uh, I, can't remember, I believe it was two days prior. He had not slept since the two days prior to his crucifixion all through the, the Garden of Gethsemane until his crucifixion the, the next day. Um, we'll move along quickly now. He also had no home in Luke uh, 9, 57. Luke 9, chap uh, chapter 9, verse 57. Uh, 
And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Um, he had no home during this time. Uh, and it's at, at first look, you'd think it's only three years that he'd been traveling. But in reality, uh, he has a heavenly home. He left his real home to come to earth and to suffer all these uh, things and to suffer the just the struggles of a travel ministry and uh, people trying to kill him uh, quite regularly um, to say that he had no home. Uh, he may have not had a physical home, but I'd be pretty sure that he'd be missing his, uh, his heavenly home at this point. Um, he was also betrayed and abandoned uh, by those who were closest to him. Uh, Judas's betrayal in Matthew 26, 14 to 16. Um, he uh, made the deal with the, the, the Pharisees, the leaders, to, uh, to kill Jesus um, for the value of 30 silver coins. Uh, there's a lot of debate on the value of those silver coins. Um, some say that it's only a few hundred dollars. Some think that it may have been uh, as, many, as much as fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000. Um, most people seem to agree that it was somewhere around four or five thousand dollars in today's money, and that's not a lot of money to uh, to betray uh, Jesus, someone that you travelled with for such a long period of time. Um, uh, and Jesus would have known all that at the time. I don't, I couldn't imagine what that would feel like to to have someone betray you like that. Um, we also see that. Uh, uh, Peter denies him, chapter in Matthew twenty six sixty nine to seventy five, um, and prior to that, his disciples all fled him when he was arrested. Um, these are struggles that none of us have actually gone through. Very, and there's very few people uh, alive who have gone through anything uh, even close to what Jesus has gone through. Um, there has been many more times Jesus suffered throughout his ministry. Um, but the purpose for all of this suffering is set out in Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. I'll turn to Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne room of uh, throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, so life is hard, often from our own mistakes, often from serving God. But God will listen to us in our troubles. Jesus has suffered for no fault of His own, but for our uh, for our sake He suffered. Uh, we can rejoice knowing that God sent His Son to suffer for us, and that we have access to the throne room of grace. Um, it's such an amazing thing to know that uh, even tonight when we all uh, bowed in that time of prayer that we had access uh, access to God. No matter what struggles we're going through uh, today, we can always have access to grace through Jesus Christ. All right, that's all I have for tonight. Um, I'll pray and then I believe we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the night. Pray that uh, you would take us home safely now. Pray that you would help us to... Uh, uh, move forwards in our lives, uh, serving you, uh, regardless of whatever suffering we may uh, receive because of it. Uh, Lord, I pray you would just give us grace and strength uh, as we move forwards for you. pray this in your name. Amen.